What is up guys? The wait is finally over. Diecast Masters has finally shipped the first order of the new 150th scale Caterpillar models. And today we have a review of the Caterpillar 420F2 IT Backo Loader and 150th scale again by Diecast Masters. Before we get into this model and my first impressions of it are, I was wrong. It's actually a pretty nice model for what it is. Um, so if you watch the Kevin show, you know I had some negative things to say about it. But you know what? My worries were put at ease almost. So we're going to dive into it. But first, we got the box. We got this tin container that everybody has been, well, iffy about, really. I've heard good things and bad things, or good opinions and bad opinions on it. But honestly, I kind of like it. Um, it's very nice, very simple. It's not cheap at all. And unlike the one that uh, Heavy Equipment of Chicago got, where it was, was the 390F and it said four, or the 740 dump truck, this one is correct with the machine specifications in English and in metric, um, and a nice picture of the actual machine, and a nice Diecast Masters logo on the bottom. Um, just some general information. Diecast Masters, real replicas, the Highline series, which is pretty much the generic thing. Um, then you got a picture of the model on this side, 420F2, backo loader, collectible replica, and again, Diecast Masters. Open this tin thing up, and pretty nice lid. It's pretty nice, and then inside you get two foam trays, and you get a um, Diecast Masters mini catalog, which I have two of these now. They sent me one in the mail. Well, by they, I mean 3,000 toys. Now then, with the packaging out of the way, it's time to get to the best part of it. And actually, you know what? I was expecting the packaging to be the best part, but it turns out I was wrong. Um, the model itself is very nice, and I will compare it to the last backo that we got from Caterpillar, which is the old Norscott 420 DIT. So anyways, back at it. So the front bucket is actually smaller. It's a 4-in-1 bucket, as you can tell, but it is actually smaller than the previous one we got from Norscott, you know, that giant ugly hunk of shit. Well, this time, we actually have a more in-scale bucket that actually looks pretty decent. Um, it has a gloss black finish, and it is very nice. It's not um, free-flopping, if you know what I mean. Um, like the previous backo models that we got from Norscott, it's a very nice, it's a very nice casting. And as typical for the IT, it does have a quick coupler. Now, it is a little bit tough. As you can tell, but it does come off if you give it a little effort. And you got a black quick coupler, which is typical. And it, there's what it looks like without the bucket on it. And you get two attachments, which is the forks. I've not tried those on yet. So again, IT loader. I'm not gonna clip it in place because you've seen the issues I had getting it off. And you also had that um, material handler thingy right here. So it's the same thing as the Norscott one. But one thing that, like I said on the bucket, it is actually quite a bit smaller in comparison to the Norscott one. This is off the 420. Um, very nice. Very nice that they actually reduced the size of it. I'm very glad that they did. Uh, I really am. Up here, you have the cat logo, the wider hood, which I like. And this is the one my good friend, R. Mitchell Excavating, likes the most about the 420F backos is the exhaust is off to the side. Of course, it's a tier four machine. Now then, we got this little figure inside and some people have had mixed reactions about it. They call it Bob the Builder. And I think it's appropriate from some for some models, but on this one, I actually think it's not necessary because of the fact that the machine has two functions. You have the loader function and you have the backo function. Well, or should I say the um, excavator function, but you cannot rotate this guy around. So that is a little bit of an issue, but you know, I, I mean, there's the underside. It looks pretty nice. It says 150th and Diecast Masters. It looks pretty nice actually, to be honest. Um, anyways, up here you have 420F2, nice sharp graphics. Um, up here you have the beacon light with the little um, power cord running to it from the cab. Now, the one thing about the F2 series is the fact that um, the cab was redesigned the first time since 2006 that we've seen a redesign on the cab of a Caterpillar Backo. Um, we were used to that bubble cab. Now, it's more of a box-like cab. It's not as bubbular as it was, but I like it. Now, it does steer. It's actually kind of limited by these fenders here 
and also by the box so that's as much as that side can steer but it can steer that much on that side so not the best but you know you have your safety bar here and all that um the outriggers are nice these are road working pads um they, they do go down that's as far as they go down which reminds me a little bit of the older nzg um days when the outriggers did not actually touch the ground at all um but that's the furthest that they go down but they come up and they look pretty nice i mean i think it sticks out a little bit too far for my liking but you know otherwise now the loader function is pretty nice it's pretty it looks to be the similar casting to the older e-series one that we've seen but the rear bucket is actually different um there's the there there is the furthest the bucket could curl out and i wish it would be more but Oh well, now this cylinder was, was really tight, and you do have your e-stick, your slider stick, which is pretty nice, it works very well. Digging depth is very nice, and let me throw the e-stick on there, and there's the digging depth. As you can see though, it will not hold it until right about there. Um, it curls up nice and tight once again. This kind of reminds me of a Ford um, linkage setup, sorry about the clock. But this sort of reminds me of the Ford setup, the way the bucket looks and all that. But it does curl in nicely, but it does is limited on curl out. Now that we do have the two attachments that we've gotten, this one is a Caterpillar H75. So, it, so it's pretty much the same hammer casting. They just put it as a H75. The previous one was an H70. And we got the cat, the cat um, decal back, which we lost a couple years ago. And you also have the same art auger that we've seen for nearly 10 years, or well over 10 years by now. You do have some nice um, decaling, warning decaling on the back. You can see a windshield wiper. No, it's not a windshield wiper. It looks like, well, yeah, it is a windshield wiper. And then you got some lights casted in and painted on, which is nice. You can see the look on this side. Um, now, I wish the back hoe boom would go up a little bit more but one good thing is that you don't have it flopping around like you used to it's actually more tighter than it was um so it doesn't flop around as you can see um again fenders those are plastic yes they are now overall i think this is a good model um diecast masters i said it on the kevin show if you do not watch the kevin show i'd suggest you would You'd get to all my opinions. Um, the linkage on the IT is a lot more in scale, so I, the functionality is better. I don't think I showed you the loader functions, but there's as far as it goes, which it would not load a Mac. And then there's as far as it dumps. Then there's as far as it tilt would tilt back, which is still better than you would get with a 420E, which I'll show you in comparison. There's as far back as it would go. Again, this is the older... North Scott one. Now what's funny about this one is the linkage, if you notice, is upside down on this one. So typical North Scott. Um and yeah. And the reason that this is there is because I actually glued the four in one bucket together because I was tired of it flopping everywhere. But you know, nonetheless, it's still a good thing. Interior cab detail, which is something I nearly forgot. You can see the little Bob the Builder guy. He has sunglasses and all that in there, which actually reminds me of a guy that works for this company. Um, you got your joystick controls. Nice, fine details in there, really. Um, get the back out to twist over so you can get a good view inside. Very nice piece. You can see he has reflective banding on him, so I'm actually okay with the figure, in all honesty. Um... But Diecast Masters, I will say, they have impressed me um, on this one. I honestly am impressed with the quality. It is a nice piece, nonetheless. Oh, by the way, under the outriggers, I know um, Diecast Construction Page doesn't like this, but the webbing underneath, um, the support webbing. But I will say, I am very happy with this piece. I was surprised the fact that the bucket is different on it, and I'm very, very pleased with this model. Um, so if there's any representatives from Diecast Masters watching, you guys did a great job on this piece. I'm very happy with it. I honestly think it's a good refresher. Um, and I can honestly say that this is approaching one of my, this is probably my tie with my first best favorite backhoe model. Um, I mean, it's just great to see this model. And if 
you guys want a nice little comparison compared to an old older NZG piece, I guess, is the 416. I know this isn't going to be a comparison, but this is where Cat has gone the last 20 years. Um, honestly, though, I am very pleased with this. I cannot say it enough. I'm very happy with this piece. And honestly, now the price is not the best. It's not the selling point because the fourth... Th the 420e went for 50 bucks this goes for 75 which is more than the 335f will go for but i am nonetheless happy with the model so if you want to spend the money on a backo you know go for it um it is a nice piece overall and i honestly say um you know it's a good piece to go for overall so thanks for watching guys and as always peace out